Okay, so after finishing a large refactor of both resource and the associated create info, getting all that working pretty okay well enough, I now need to go through, after all that, I need to kind of go through and do a bunch of little stuff that's been kind of building been building up that I've been catching up on uh, or finding as I was doing going through that, that process instead. So to begin with, of course, if I recall correctly, Ooh, where's the cursor? There it is. If I go through this and then, then I end, I should have a couple of memory leaks. Two, 24 bytes, which are these two. And then, okay, this stuff is outside of my application as far as I can tell. Because if I run this on a on <clears throat> a laptop, I just don't get these at all. So maybe something to do specifically well with libx CV on, on this particular system. But these two, I do get replicated on other other systems. So these two are actual real things that I need to figure out now. So <clears throat> to begin with is to, well, figure it out. What exactly is, we'll start with, I guess, the first one. I mean, they're both, because they're both doing something inside YAML read shader, graphics shader, right? But they're both inside of this function. Just one is inside the... <clears throat> They're both literally the same, actually. So if I can figure out one, I can figure out the other. So to do with a allocation in YAML read optional for this bindings node for the for any set of bindings that I create. So let's see. Let's let's roll back. So we go to the actual that. YAML read option. So as part of the YAML read graphics shader, which is still inside of the graphics VK, YAML, okay. So rolling back to the graphics resource, what happened is we created this. This create info has that. If I go to this, that's this. Move that off to the side. Okay. So it's part of the VK descriptor set layout. And then it's the this. It's the these things are being created on the heap and never being freed. But I do have this, which is going through this destroy. That's only destroying the actual local object. So it's only destroying this stuff. But of course, this being just a plain old struct doesn't actually have and this also being a plain old struct doesn't have anything for actually destroying that so what what I need to do is uh, do I <clears throat> do I have a clean I have a cleanup for this right and that's okay so I need I need a function here it's gonna run void it's going to be like you know um, destroy okay. Oh, graphics VK. Destroy shader create info. I'm just going to take in one of these. It's going to be const whatever PCI create info, and that's new function. Go to the source side of this. Shift public. Yeah. What's going to happen is the only thing I have, okay, is that. So I need to do like include VK struct cleanup. Not sure if I have a link to it in here, if it's like been, if that library has been linked in. Probably not. I need to clean up VK, was it? Descriptor set layout. Layout create info, sorry. This. So we need that. So all the stuff that's in there will be cleaned up by that. And then we get back out. Then what <clears throat> needs to happen is this. Back here. Uh, sorry, not back here. Here. In this function needs to be called here, so we need 
as part of that. Hmm. If I wanted this to be C compatible, I can't actually have something in there, but I have this function, which I'm using instead. So I'll do that. So I'll just do, is that it? No, is it that? You create info also oh, PCI that mm -hmm. undefined reference to the cleanup. So go back to this to this. I need to link in as. <clears throat> V, S is before V, VK is correct. No. I believe I have this. It'd be part of the Vulcan mini libs. I have one, two, three, clean up. So it'd be a separate library, right? Struct cleanup, which is just that. Yeah. Did you compile. It'll all link up right, please. Indeed it will, okay. So let's see how that goes. I'm expecting I'll probably... Oh no, it actually works just fine. All that's left is the other two. Mysteries. But, yeah, okay, so that's that. Let me see if I can find fixed memory leak. There we go, ticked off. And let's get this in. So, on this side, we've got a new function, destroying this object cleanly. which goes into the cleanup for that. <clears throat> That's auto-generated. Link that in, and then we actually call that from this destroy. And that's it. Created an, all an allocation on the heap will be created to would never be properly free again. This fixes that. And of course I need to do that through this, but I got a couple items which need to have updated a couple of years. That and that.
Focus here to create infrastructure supporting. Okay. One thing. So next, close all that, is we're going back to the resource, because if I recall, I have an extra function, or is it part of graphics resource? I think it's part of this. Is it vertex descriptor loader? Hmm. Yes, this, this function uh, was part of, so the purpose of this function way back was when you had something like a vertex descriptor type which has a bunch of sub resources that would it would wait to load uh, would also require to be loaded or wait to load or like request you know did it fail to load because uh, at the time each object would have its own specific type you know for a shader type a, 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 a material type a image type whatever so I couldn't actually just go through and check them all. I would instead have this, which would be this, which would be a templated function, variadic templated function that went through each type. And you know this would all compile down very neatly into a very small function. You know it's all great and all that, but um, eventually it had to be changed. To remove okay so this has already actually been removed so I go back actually just a little bit yeah it used to be like if it was a faux resource type which is the new common base type for all resources it would just do the simple function of checking it and then returning a special specific type or if it was like a, a you know a unique type each, it would go through that type. It's been shrunk down a little bit, but I can probably change this. I don't. It doesn't have to be done like this anymore, does it? I don't think it has to be. No. I could probably change this up. To be a little bit different. A little bit smaller. I'm not entirely sure. Like I could actually just keep it like this. I'm just. Hmm. What I want to do is I don't want to return if it's just lo loaded, unloaded, or failed. Or rather, uh, let me try to rethink how restate this. I want it to go through all of the items and ch you know to, to see what's the worst state. If the worst state is all, if they're all loaded, then that's fine. That's perfect. I want to return that. However, if there's any that are unloaded, I want to return that, except for the case where there's any that have failed to load. Because if there's any that have failed to load, then that means you know we're just this, this resource isn't going to happen. So you may as well just return that and stop the process of loading everything else and just call it. A day at that point right just don't requeue this for the loading process because it's just not going to happen not under the current state so right now if it's either unloaded or failed it'll just start returning right from that point and I don't really want to do that rather I want to go through uh, so like this isn't even Variadic at all, is it? No. It doesn't, or at least doesn't have to be variadic template. Can I, can I just do like faux resource? Info resource that. Hmm, no. Okay, so one thing I may want to do. Okay, first of all, I'm going to do two. I'm going to do this in two stages. First of all, I want to return like the if failed, failed, a failed one taking precedence over unloaded and loaded. So I need to go. I I can't just return the first one that's unloaded. If state equals uh, 
Oh, this is terrible. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have a new function entirely. This is terrible. So what's going to happen? We're going to have the new one. It's just going to return this. I'm going to do get first sub resource. State. Load state. It's going to be un32t um, resource count. Oh, resource star. We're just gonna we're just gonna pass in the list, the well, counted list. We're just gonna go through all of them and return the worst. Just simple, like no need for variadic templates or anything like that. So I got state state equals. It's gonna start off at you know, loaded. It. We go through. Um, auto state equals oh, resource load. Go resource get state of that if state is code resource load state failed, just like straight up just return that. That is by far the worst. We can just exit early, whatever. Otherwise, if not equal that, mm. can I just do this as a switch almost? I don't think it really matters, not for two cases. Unloaded. And then we can state first state equals that. Because again, I want to go through and get the worst of them all. I don't want to just like immediately return. And then I just return worst state. So as it goes through, if it finds any that just straight up failed, it just returns that immediately. And it goes through the rest. Like it, so the, for, if it goes, gets to this point, it's either loaded or unloaded. And if any of the unloaded, like if it's the first or last, whatever, that's still good. So this is the one. I, this is the thing I want to do. So I want to do that. I want to scrap this. Worst sub resource. Load state. Means gonna have a few locations that are going to fail horribly right here. Um, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, there's four of them. equals this okay so I don't even want sub resource just get worse resource state get worse that it's gonna be this dot size, this dot data. I save that. Oops. 
So if it's loaded, that's great. If it's failed, that means I'm just decrementing the use and reference of all of these things. Mm, I don't. I don't think so. I think this is slightly off. Okay, I need to add that. I need to check sub resource ref counting um, method. I think I should just be working with the use count and ref count is based on whether or not geometry shader is not that rather. But okay, sub resource state, that's one. I should be another one somewhere because this function was in two locations. That's great. So this was in line, so that's not good. Mm. Need a list. Let's copy this. This is a uh, HPP because I'm just not even bothering with extern C stuff here. I mean, it's just an internal function, anyways. So we got that. I need to add this. So compiled. Then I got to go back to here. Okay, and I'm for this I'm going to need to include array, otherwise GCC and uh, MSVC are going to absolutely fail. Let's include array. Whoops. Okay. <sighs> Get state. I'm in here. Great. I'm doing something here, right? Worst. Wait, what's going on here? Is this because...
I'm going to imagine it's because some of these are null, right? No, that's fine. Okay, can I just open this? Oh, come on. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. Mm hmm. <clears throat> skip it. Whether or not something is supposed to have stuff isn't the responsibility of this function. If your vertex descriptor needs to have a certain object, then that's the responsibility of the vertex descriptor to complain about it, not this. That said, if, if technically there's no sub resources, then they're technically all loaded. That's how I'm gonna do that. Yeah, that's the ex explanation I'm gonna uh, roll with. For sure. Nice. I'm really interested. If I had this go for longer, like, is the memory leak just increasing? Yeah. So I'm going to assume it's. Well, not that one, but that one is. It may just be like it's reallocating on the same spot or something. I don't really know. Maybe one day I'll actually look into it. But the worst sub -resource, uh, resource thing is going to be done. Let me check that off. Check worst sub resource template function. Mm -hmm. I need way more documentation. All these great. Okay, just fit that in. The templated dyadic is a holdover. with the Should add like
Okay, I'll just, whoop. I'll add that. So a little bit of an explanation, even if not great. So that's enough. That's that's two things. About half an hour. Okay. Next is checking resource type. I have a bit of a problem, if I recall correctly. Okay, this is all header, regular C header, error code. It's fine. Hmm. I gotta figure this out. Ah, here. The ECS IDs <clears throat> is a C based header. Mm, because of this. And actually this. Numeric limits. Yeah. So I need to convert this to be fully C compatible if I'm gonna be using it down there. Maybe change a few of these. Get rid of, and yeah, getting rid of the const expression as well. Mm-hmm. Ah, and this, oh. Hmm. Can we be because I don't think C has the ability to uh, I don't think so at all. Okay. Digits, how many digits? There are thirty two digits. Because that this as it stands would be, you know, if I was to change this to a you went 64 down the line, like all these would automatically change. But I don't think that's really going to happen here. And standard string, that's not going to work. These can. This might. This can, <clears throat> this can be slightly modified. Okay, I need to, I need to do two things. I need to, First of all, id.h, and then a header, HPP version. So I need this, B22. That's actually going to be something this is going to be bringing. So, ECS ID on H. C standard in scone. Limits and string, these are C items. So, that comes over here. We don't have using, we have type. Okay.
Actually, before I do this, I'm actually curious. If I was to actually have just a plain old C file somewhere in here, So that's, as part of this file, yeah, that's not going to be found. If I was to change this to standard int.h, that's still going to fail from other things. limits numeric limits for ID digits and the max value okay do I even really use this I I mean I do hmm so got all these down to enter the ID that's great now this Num bits is number of digits for for ID, which is what is it? Sorry. Thirty-two. Does that work? So what I want to do as part of this is to include that instead. Okay, there's a lot more going on than I was hoping. This is going to actually turn into a whole bunch of other things as well to deal with. So how do I do this? For ID max. This is something that uses C++, that's fine. Get rid of that, but keep this. ID group, so it's full ID, max ID. Shift that, shift that. So these. Would stick around here. Set a cast. I just want to do that. Do, 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 do. Ah, hold on. Just that. Mm -hmm. Group the value. Okay.
Oracle ID, Git group. Yeah, these three. You shift it over. That's a string. And I've got this thing down here. So this is really brought down. Basically, all it's just ID two string, HPP. Um, ECS ID two string. So is there even a, anything to export from here? The answer is no. A source ID to okay, this just needs to be changed up to ID that to that. Do I not even, I don't even think I have type anymore, do I? No. Okay, now let's kind of go through and So where have I did have this? Does this even okay? Where I can, I'm going to get away with just play old C header one. This where it's going to use that will then pull in. So wherever this is, this is this is just getting replaced right now with this, and then I'll just kind of go through where yeah, that won't work. Get rid of the test for the moment.
copy that and wherever I need it, I'll add I'll add it right there. Sure, okay. That's a different one. Okay, it's all that out of the way. And that's that. <sighs> so everything but that file, please, which is a lot. Is there like a macro for number of bits in the type? Or is it just like you have to just know it? Or is it the size? Oh, I could do the size of, couldn't I? Yeah, I can do that. Size of, or at least I'm assuming that 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 is what it is. This can is then technically the same divided again by eight. But that that's that's probably a number of uh, copyright headers I have to update for that. But it's otherwise good. For for now. I can't like I, I mean, is this gonna really change? I mean, it probably is. Maybe quantum computer uh, why am I bothering about that? Who cares about that yet? Okay, yeah. Did I actually make any fundamental changes to any of these? The answer is no. I just changed up a header. That's not really a logical change. So I'll just kind of bypass that. So I'm just going to say,
the original ECS ID. In this to it's a decimal check instead in to the ID to string large. I mean, I'll probably change it again in the future if I really start needing it, but right now, I don't need the two string to really be. I I don't need it to be in C yet. If there's a need, I'll do it. For now, this will work. So all that great. Now let me mark that off. So when I was doing the the that. There was an issue with test.c, something about mm, the error code, right? If I do this, that's expecting struct beforehand. Um, Curious, what about, no. There's a way around this. I mean, I could do a type def, but I don't really want to do a type def. I want to see, <sighs> okay, so we got a type def, e oh no, it's a type def enum. Mm -hmm. Do do. Okay, type def, no, that's the enum. You know, type def struct that, okay. Oh, it's kind of, oh, okay, it's combined, right? Type that, that to that. Really?
This needs a bool.h for the boolean type. Standard bool.h. Okay, this is um so if I want to do this, I want I need to have like a test. Which is just a blank file, it's, you know, test C compatibility. Which is just that. It's just an empty file that just, you know. Uh, includes the headers. Just to make sure that they are indeed what I expect. Oh, it wasn't the source, that's why. Okay, now that, yeah, okay. I'll need to have just files like that to make sure it stays compatible. So I've got resource functions. Now, is this gonna work? I don't think this will work. It's just gonna. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Wait, these are all fine. Going all the way back to here, fo. What I want here is a test. Let's see. So it's just like this. And I want to check fo error. Plugin handle error code engine detail delimited string. Those are all the plain old C header ones, so hey, let's do it. So now we got this again. Um, do I just need to? Is 
this is this how I'm gonna have to do it? What's going on? Help me. Do, okay, what is my C compatibility sitting at? I have C11. Can I double check what exactly is going on with the C headers? C versions, C11, I guess. the alignment the no return thread stuff unicode support blah 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 blah, blah. Hmm. there's 14 there's 17 oh that's c plus plus whoops Uh, the C17 <sighs> addresses defects in C11 without introducing new language features. Okay. Was what C2X was? Is this even th happening? De voted on next year in 2023. Okay, we'll just go with C17. I'm going all the way up. How C++ though? Is it still like? C plus plus twenty, which I already have here. Yeah, okay. I'm hoping all the distros I support, all the way back to Debian, has is has at least had a release in the past five years. I hope with this seventeen support. Well, no, they all have the C plus plus twenty. So yeah, let's redo all that. And actually, going all the way up to here check build check this so we got c com uh, header compatibility somewhere in this string should be c17 and the other is c plus plus 20. so this is this is happening by the clang instead of clang plus plus big thumbs way way up Okay, um, are there any other things? Log, that's P plus plus, chrono plus plus. Okay, ECS, it was just the IDs for now. Graphics, this is all, ooh, what's this? Oh, oh this is the, this again, graphics. Back end, which just, yeah. I mean, I may as well, right? Do I have this actually incorrect? C compat compatibility, compatibility. Compat ability. What? Every time I look really hard at a word, it looks wrong. Like the ability, the ability just to me when I look at it and just think about it, it just looks wrong for no good reason. So we got that. We got that. Where are you? Right up here. Oh, po. Come on out.
Okay. Did I actually add it or did I just add the file? I just added the empty file. Error code and stuff. I don't know if Microsoft is going to be compatible with C17. They're not even compatible with like C99, aren't they? Oh. Oh, no. Uh. Crap. Um, I'll just have to wait to see what uh, CIA throws up. Oh, it's going to be brutal. To support something that old. Tability. here nothing here nothing here two things here There's nothing here at all. Mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna, no, just don't. If, it's, if there's nothing here, leave it for now. This one, of course, I already have it. Simulation, do I have anything that's just the error code? And again, there's nothing there, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, that's a nine, really. That and that. I do have tests. Yes.
And that'll be it for the moment. So I just added a bunch of those to make sure that C headers are actually C compatible, even though obviously a number of them are not. Type defs. So I need a post. Okay, type def. That. There we hour fifteen. Okay. those Next, uh, I want to see if I can make my logger C compatible. At least, okay, so this is, uh, oh, this is a bit of fun. Hmm. The problem here being multiple. First of all, it's a class, not great. Secondly is the fact that I have format format here on the public side, which means that's bringing in a lot of whatever's in here. So it means all the, those files bring in an extra, you know, whatever this is, 3.2 thousand lines. Do I, should I really need to? I don't think the answer is yes, but Okay, rather than just focus on C compatibility, I want to see if I can, first of all, move this format stuff out of here. I want to put it on the source side if it's possible. Or some, okay. I know in C, C variadic, like printf and that have variadic macro function template, something like that. Function. C variadic function, variadic functions in C. Okay, but there's something else I can do in logs. Is I've been meaning to let's say when I run let, let, when I run this, the logs that are produced are kind of like all over the place, like uh, okay, not so much this, but like they keep like shifting left and right. 
I want to see if I can put, rather than have like where it came from first, I want to see if I can get like the, the severity first and then have where it came from, then the message. So I'm just going to do that. That should be real fast. I don't even need to explain it, do I? Because I'll have it done in like a second. Logger. Okay, no, no, because it uses different syncs. Wait, where's my main, where's... Where is... Okay, maybe this takes a, a second. I don't know where I, on earth I put, like, a developer console. Is this it? Maybe. No, 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 this isn't it. Where on earth am I getting this output from? I have to, come on. I gotta remember it somehow. No, not here. In here. Somewhere at the beginning of the application, I have to start. Where? Do, 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 do. Start XR. And XR. Ooh, main loop. Here we go. No, no, here we don't go. Okay, um, please, please, I need to, okay, dev console, it is a dev console, which is from where, where is this, uh, where is it, where is it, not this, I want this. Uh, is it like, is it actually the developer console that I put in way back when? Can I find it? Do I just not know where it is anymore? Am I crazy? One. Two, three. Right here, because it's the only part of editor mode. Okay, but it's the I am GUI dev console. Okay. No, but that's just what. That's just a. That's not it. That's not it at all. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me actually end the application. So if I didn't have editor mode, would I just not have any output? Did I do this? I swear I've been, I, I should be outputting to somewhere else as well. Be another thing, because I'm pretty sure the I'm GUI one is specifically for outputting to, well, the I'm GUI elements. Yeah, I keep, Where is this from? Here it is. Standard out sync. Oh. Wow. See? I have no idea what I'm doing. Say, oh, you know, this will take a second. Proceeds to have no clue how we implemented this or how simple it was originally either. Like an absolute idiot. Just run it. So, does it? I don't know why I have that. Get out of here. Yeah, quit. Get out of here. Run it. Verbose, I need space. Yeah, that's that's that'll be better. If I have the actual like 
Severity first. A bit more readable, but hey, you know, whatever. So I'll do that. Going to do with this. Now put to standard out. Okay. All right. I guess about an hour and a half. I can call it there. It's, it's just been a whole bunch of little side issues. I managed to just you know play whack a mole with for now, and I'll probably I'm not sure exactly sure what's next at this time. So well, until then, cheers. <laughs>